Welcome back to Motorsports Tech Talk with your hosts, Brian and Eric. How's it going, Eric? You know, pretty good. That's good. That's, yeah. what, that's what I like to hear. Yeah. What about you, buddy? You know, it's going great. I, it's always it's always great getting to record another one of these, you know? Yeah. So. Uh, normally, I'd say sun shining, grass is green. What's to complain about, but... We're in fucking Michigan. And yeah. the sun's gray, and and you never get to see you never get to see the sun. It's just yeah. dark, just dark forever. You know, you gotta hate yeah. the winters. You do. Yeah, it's it's not my favorite. That's for sure. No, but moving on to something we do enjoy mm -hmm. rather than mm -hmm. Michigan winters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's uh, let's you know take the tech part of our title and kind of expand on it maybe try and educate some of the youths mm -hmm, mm -hmm. on uh arrow seems to be pretty popular these days yes yeah so, everyone everyone's slapping a wing on anything they can find yeah i mean they've been doing that for a for a hot minute yeah I mean, but you know i mean let's make it uh useful mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. practical yeah talk about it when it comes to uh you know, uh, your crap can, you know, sort of cheap racing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, yeah, kind of what, what should you look for, for the, the best bang for your buck, basically. Yep. So, so, uh, yeah, so this will be, uh, more, one of our more tech focused episodes where we take a kind of a, not really as much of a deep dive in this case, more of a, an overview of, and, and some, some tech tips and to to trying to maximize your your kind of entry level arrow so yeah so i mean and the the place you'd you'd want to start there is just the very simple the ideas the the kind of the theories that, that govern these arrow devices so yeah and i mean it's uh well he's got theories used in a few different places but this is bernoulli we're talking about right mm-hmm so it's a good dude. Yeah, real, real great guy. Mm -hmm. um, why don't you Why don't you tell me about Bernoulli's principle? Yeah. So I mean, the the way these air devices work are uh, very simply just based off of a pressure differential between that that whatever the top surface and the bottom surface is. In the case of us motorsports guys, we're not trying to fly or anything. We want that higher pressure on the top than the bottom. Yep. So, and and just to, uh, because I don't personally know our audience, break that down a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, that pressure over the entire area, mm -hmm. uh, well, let's say a wing in this instance, creates a force. Yes. Right? Um, and if you had something symmetrical, it'd be equal and opposite. But if you have high pressure on one side, low pressure on the other side, side with higher pressures pushing in our case down right there's just, your, just there's a balance your, of forces and there's your down force yep so but how do we how do we make these pressure differentials so i don't know you tell me yeah yeah i'll, I'll try okay um, i guess the simplest way to put it is as we said bernoulli bernoulli's principle uh it's creating this uh you know, difference in vo making a difference in velocity between the, the these two surfaces. So, the easiest way to do that, the easiest way to think about that is usually with an airfoil. I mean, it's probably the the most used aerodynamic aerodynamic device across aerodynamics. Um, but uh, the way those work is they're basically your lower surface is 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 a longer kind of a longer distance of travel than your your top surface in the case of a, a race car wing and creating that difference uh in in distance so like you have that more uh, larger curved lower surface and then that kind of tighter is the con the concave upper surface yeah, the upper surface will be concave and uh that creates the need for the air at the bottom to go uh, faster to meet up with the, the air going over the top. And then Bernoulli says that difference in velocity creates that difference in pressure. So 
by doing that, you then create that lower lower pressure area at the bottom, uh, which is usually in, in the case of a wing is that's your main working surface. Uh, and that that's what's creating your downforce. Now, the same thing can be applied to splitters uh, and basically any any aerodynamic device in the car, even the whole entire car itself, which, yeah. you know, is, is how the pros do it. That's right? how the they, pros do they, it. They don't have two individual components working separately. It's it's uh, it all comes together. Yeah, it's one, one giant time. aerodynamic surface. Just yep. they're using it all the best they can, or a lot the, that the rules allow them to at least. Yeah. So, um, but for for your kind of entry level stuff, your easy stuff to find, build, uh, your kind of your starting point's usually going to be, and it is for most people, and it, it shows with most cars you see is just mainly looking at your, your front splitter and then your rear wing. It's kind of your two, your two go-tos if you're trying to, to make some downforce. Mm -hmm. So if we're only going to use those two elements, um, at least in this example, uh, we want to, we, we want to balance our center of pressure. Right? Yes. Um, so then let's let's think about what we can do with each component. Mm -hmm. And I think due to most rules, we're going to be limited by the rear wing. Yeah. Generally, you can't be further back than the furthest most back piece of the car, mm -hmm. probably the bumper. And you can't be above the hood line. Does that mm -hmm. seem about right? For the rear wing? Yes. You mean like the the roof line? Sorry, you said you yes. Said hood. Yeah, but uh, yeah, like yes, roof line. Sorry. Yeah, like most, some yeah have to be within the envelope. Some will have like plus or minus a couple inches to the roof line or to the back of the car. But for the most part, yeah, it's usually dictated by the back of the car and the top of the car. Okay, so, um, I'll I'll ask for your input, but mm -hmm. the reason we would want to put that wing all the way back there right the reason they have to make rules to give us this bounding area mm -hmm. you know to control where we're putting it is uh as high and as far back as you can get that wing is cleaner air yes yeah so it's going to be cleaner air that's especially when you're racing in a pack if you're if you're more not as much time attack but more uh, road racing wheel to wheel um it's going to be the cleanest air um and but there's also a lot of there could there can be some trade-offs too to that position um so you know that force that we're making as you said uh, at that at the airfoil that's going to be reacting on the car via the the uh the center of pressure mm -hmm. And depending on, and, and then, so the position of that wing is going to change the center of pressure. Right. So if you put it, you know, the further back you put it, the more it's actually going to be somewhat working against your front arrow. However, um, it can also, you can use it to your advantage to create that larger kind of moment to give you that more rear downforce if that's what you're looking for. So, and, you know, there can be, kind of knock on side effects that we're not going to go into here, but like the being able to help your underbody drive more flow through by creating that lower pressure behind the car. But for the most part, just looking at it more from like kind of a free body diagram mm. perspective, putting in the back is going to let you get more of that uh, kind of that moment around that center of pressure or to adjust that position of your center of pressure. Okay. Um, so, um, just because you mentioned it and I'm, I'm not really trying to bounce around too much here, but, um, so it might fight our front downforce you mentioned. Yes. So, uh, what's to stop me from making a splitter the size of a dinner table? Well, I mean, why wouldn't I want to do that? So as you, as you're kind of alluding to with the rear wing, um, there can be some restrictions on how much, how far you can put your, your front splitter as far as rules are concerned. But if rules were no object, I mean, 
uh, one problem with a splitter going that large is it kind of loses it is it loses its effectiveness the further away further forward it goes um so yeah you start to get like diminishing returns in that case and maybe the only way to up to a point to get you know try to extend your or try to change your center of pressure more forward uh, it might be difficult for a splitter design you might have to start looking at like a front wing or something but that's that's usually going to be challenging a, right. in a car <laughs> yep not like a formula car so uh, if we're just looking at splitters like they're they're they'll we'll get to a point where you kind of have diminishing returns on that front splitter though you know extending out it's just gonna it's gonna keep increasing that front down force it's just again it's going to move that center pressure forward and if you not able to get a big enough rear wing or in, in the right spot in the back to balance it then you're just going to have a very understeery kind of car mm -hmm. now it could be beneficial on certain cars because a lot of times you want to try to match that center of pressure to your vehicle's uh, mass or center of mass position front to rear uh, to try to kind of it it makes for a car that the balance doesn't change from low to high speed basically um so that's definitely something to look out for but for the most part um it, i've seen i used to i used to feel that the this you could you could basically make kind of as much front down force as you possibly can just because you can make your splitter super long but there there's there comes to a point where it's going to be hard to to kind of practically do that and like if you're racing against people uh you know you're, you don't want to just knock that thing off every time you either go over a curb or just you're really close to someone so mm -hmm. that can be difficult and then you know sometimes it's it's hard to get a rear wing i guess big enough that can i mean you can make one but as far as what's available it can be hard to, to get one that's uh that can kind of counteract that effectively. Okay. Okay. So if I'm trying to make and position a splitter, what would you, do you have any good rules of thumb? I guess. Um, um, Cause we've seen, or I've seen splitters that are so high off the ground, mm. which doesn't necessarily have to be, be that high. But they're high enough off the ground to not work. Mm -hmm. um, or they're low enough to touch the ground at speed. And then there goes your front down force. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then it comes back up. Uh, I think maybe last year, maybe two years ago, you could see the GTLM Porsche. Doing this at Daytona. Mm -hmm. they call it was it porpoising. porpoising. Yeah. Yep. So if, if I'm just at home building an E30 or my next trump car, whatever it might be, do you have any good rules of thumb, a working range that we can use? Um, I mean, I think as far as height, you do, I mean, you do want to get it as close as you can without scraping, basically. I mean you could get to a limit where it's kind of not scraping, but still getting a little too close. But can I guess the, the way of the way a splitter works is there's kind of, it, it goes off of that, you know, pressure differential that we were saying, but uh, part of the way this splitter works is kind of a, a different principle that we haven't talked about is, which is the ground effect. So by, by interacting with the ground and creating this kind of, you're creating this smaller, uh, kind of channel for the air to flow underneath the car. Um, you're going to, by reducing that area, you're going to accelerate the air basically underneath the car um, relative to the, what's on top of the splitter, which is, you know, you're kind of coming up against the front of the car and it's relatively low speed. So by getting the splitter close to the ground, you're, you're really improving that, that, that speed difference, which changes that pressure difference. Um, but as you kind of alluded to, there's a limit to where if it basically block closes off because you're, you're bottoming out, then, uh, then you, all of a sudden you basically lose all downforce that you had from that, that piece, which then causes it to kind of come back up at speed and then kind of restart that, that process. So, 
um, you know, that part of that could be a kind of a suspension problem. You can figure out how to get the car, you know, you can make it stiffer to make it not dive, but that can have some ramifications. Sure. So if you're just designing your arrow more, you're not changing your suspension, you know, just definitely try to keep it. I mean, I've seen them work depending on how stiff the front is like three or four inches off the ground. Um, but going you know, much closer than that without just like basically locking out your suspension might be difficult. Um, so that's kind of where I would start. Um, as far as the, the, the size of it, like extending from the car, um, again, that's kind of going to be based off of you balancing that front and rear arrow. So it's, if you're making a wing, maybe that, that gives you a little more, uh, uh, kind of scope to, to change that size. But if you're kind of stuck with what's available on the market, which right now, I mean, depending on where you're racing, if they allow carbon wings, if they allow multi-element wings, then you can, you can go pretty, pretty large. Like APR makes the, the GT 1000 triple element like that, that can get you up there. Sweet. But, uh, but if you can't use carbon, like in champ car uh, and stuck with fiberglass, there really aren't that many options. There's the aluminum extrusion type. There's some fiberglass options, but you might be kind of limited on how much rear downforce you can make. So just doing a giant, you know, dinner table splitter is then just going to make a, a not balanced car. Okay. So if I'm stuck with. Uh, specific options uh, in, in Champ Car, let's say. Uh, is there a way for is there a way for me to make it better? Um, like, I've seen end plates. Mm -hmm. What do those do? And do you have any recommendations on how to mount the wing? I've seen mm -hmm. swan necks. Seen things going under. Some people get crazy and use the end plates to mount mm -hmm. to the chassis. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so it's just, uh, just referring to a rear wing as far as. Yeah. Yeah. How can I make that, that yeah. better? Yeah. So yeah, like I guess starting with end plates, I mean, you'll see it on really any car or any race wing. They usually come with them, but you know, there's a lot of different shapes you can, you can work with there to, to increase the efficiency. I mean, basically what that end plate's doing is it's, it's, it's preventing that kind of bleed off from that, uh, low pressure bottom and the high pressure top and overall creating the efficiency. It does increase the drag by quite a bit, but overall the total efficiency is way up. So, um, so usually that, that because of that, uh, and with knowing the kind of the lower surface is your working surface, cause that's, that's your higher velocity surface. So it's much easier to disrupt that, that surface, uh, knowing that as your kind of working area of the wing, um, having your end plate extend much below the wing can be beneficial and you really don't need too much on the top because a lot of, a lot of, you know, what you're trying to protect is that lower surface. So by extending your end plates lower than, you know, then it goes above the wing, then that's usually going to be where you want to set up your end plate. Um, I mean, there can be gains from going super big, like extending it almost all the way towards the car and, and everything. There are definitely going to be some gains there, but you know, there's going to be weight and some drag penalties there. Um, so usually that that's without getting like too crazy with like slots and everything, that's kind of your most effective. Just extend your, extend your, your end plate below the much lower below the bottom surface than you are the top surface. Um, and then from there, um, as far as overall mounting, I mean, technically a kind of an end plate mounted would probably be your most efficient because you're keeping the whole surface of the bottom, the whole surface of the bottom surface of the wing unobstructed basically. And so there's no points of separation or anything, but that can be a little tricky on just regular cars. Uh, it can require either really, really large, you know, thick, thick gauge metal to mount that effectively without it wobbling all over the place. Mm -hmm. Um, or, or like yeah, a lot of support rods or, or, uh, cables or anything to, to get that from, from vibrating too much. So it, it can be tricky to mount it like that and maybe won't be the worth, maybe not worth the weight in a lot of, uh, chances. Cause you just, you know, <laughs> that force that's reacting at the middle of the wing, you know, over, you know on average at the middle is, is really going to bend that whole thing. And 
So you're not really supporting it from maybe where it's most efficient. So I guess the next best would be, especially when, when your rule set dictates your, your error devices can't extend a certain place behind the vehicle would probably be your swan neck. Cause I think the neck, maybe next most efficient, which hasn't been seen too often. It's, it's on the Audi GT2 car, but basically it's, it's a reverse swan neck where it basically goes behind the wing and then it mounts and then the mount comes forward and, 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 uh, mounts to the wing there. So then you have no, again, no obstruction, but if you're limited by the, the package, you know, kind of the, the distance from the rear of the car, then that's going to lose, you're going to lose a lot of the effective, you know, that one, being able to pull that wing further back to, to change that center pressure and to maybe inter interact with the floor, you're going to be limited there from that kind of reverse swan neck. So your next best would be that swan neck. Cause like we were saying that lower surface is your important, you don't most important one. You don't want to be have, creating separation with a, with a very, you know, blunt mount that's mounted straight to it. So by doing that swan neck, you're, you're moving that surface forward and it's still going to be some separation coming from that mount affecting the lower portion, but it's going to be greatly reduced. So that's, that's one. I remember reading an article about LMP2 cars because a bunch of them switched to that swan neck. And I think they saw a several percent, maybe like three or 4% increase in downforce for the same wing profile and everything. Um, it's pretty decent at Lama. So it's, it's, it's definitely a good, definitely an area to look at. So, and then, you know, last is just your normal bottom mount, which you can, you can make improvements to it. You can try to basically profile that mount to look almost like its own kind of airfoil shape, mm -hmm. symmetric airfoil shape. So th there's some things you can do to that to, to improve it. But, um, but I mean, the, the benefit of that's usually going to be your simplest, your smallest, your lightest mounting solution. So there can be some benefits, just a standard bottom mount. And a lot of times if you're just buying something off the shelf, that's kind of, kind of, uh, kind of how it's going to come most of the time. So it's not like you're, you you should throw it out, but you know, you, there's some efficiency to be gained in, in other styles. Okay. Okay. Um, real quick, just cause we've all seen them on the cool fast guy cars, like IndyCar F1, mm -hmm. which clearly, uh, my champ car is, <laughs> um, you have, we've all seen slots mm -hmm. in the upper portion, sometimes mm -hmm. below, of those end plates. Mm -hmm. um, tell me what that's about and what what you can get from that. Um, I think kind of a lot of times what that can allow, my understanding is, is it, it kind of allows some of that air to, I think it's more of a drag yeah, look, looking for for reduced drag it's it's trying to kind of introduce that higher pressure basically the area the higher pressure air on top of the wing kind of back into the other side which is you know, usually going to be lower pressure and it, i think it kind of reduces that that vortex that that comes from it or at least it it, it tends to it seems to be more of an efficiency drag type of thing as far as as my understanding of it okay so it, it's, it's a place you can look. I mean, it's, it's not, it's not always the worst thing to just look at what, you know, certain details that formula one is doing or other, you know, prototypes or anything, race cars, and, and just kind of applying some of those principles, knowing that like you, you're not going to be able to fully optimize it like they do, but you know, you might see some improvements there. I, th I think the importance with those vents is they have to be kind of on that that inner edge feeding air out. I don't think you want to be doing it the other way around. That would probably be, that would kind of, you'd start to limit like the effectiveness of that air end plate, what it's trying to do with separating the top and the bottom. Sure. So, okay. So that's, yeah, it's an area that I, I've seen some people experiment with. It, it can be, it can be somewhat useful, but maybe not as important. If you maybe don't have the the kind of the fab skills, you can't make like a three D shaped, right, air uh, end plate. So, okay, okay. Um, do you know in jump car, jump car, you're allowed? They they restrict the material, but you could have as many elements as you wanted, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so tell me about tell me about that. Why would I want a two element or a three element 
<laughs> when... Yeah, so I mean, yeah, you look at your F1 cars and you can see three, four. I mean, some of those front wings are like six elements or yeah, something. Yeah. All the little wing dings and <laughs> they're just yeah, they're, they're just going crazy. Yep. Um, but for the most part, usually what a what additional elements are going to offer you is is they allow you to push that wing to a much higher effective angle of attack. Uh, than you could have before without the air separating because you basically by adding those extra elements you're adding kind of slots between them which allows if if a stall condition is about to happen it allows some of that air from the top to recirculate into the bottom of the next one and and prevent that stall so you know the more elements you have the more angle attack you can have before it stalls which means the more downforce you have now one of the side effects of that though is of course more drag and and it can increase a lot more than if you just had one giant single element. So if you had just, uh, you know, and there's going to be a weight trade-off there, of course, too, and maybe you can't fit the really giant one single element at a low angle of attack. But if you're looking for a really low drag setup, it actually can be more beneficial to just go with one giant single element uh, that you're running at a lower angle of attack that's not, that uh, has attached flow and everything. Uh, you can see potentially more down first per versus, I guess, per drag, for a pound of drag going with that setup, but you're limited on how much you can adjust the down force because it's going to separate usually pretty quickly when it's that big. And then, uh, and, and it can be, it, it can be much larger. Like you can make it maybe kind of for the weight of the wing itself, you can make something that makes more down force by adding all those extra elements. Okay. But for, so maybe for something that's lower powered, uh, like a, a champ car or a lemons car or something like that, um, it might be more beneficial to stick with a larger single element since kind of the limitation of, of your, the amount of downforce you want to add to a car like that is going to be if you have enough horsepower to keep up with the drag. Now, most of the time adding downforce is going to be a net benefit for lap time, but if you're racing amongst a lot of other cars and you're really lowering your top speed from all that extra drag, it might be hard to, to stay ahead of those guys. You might have the cornering speed, but they don't just disappear uh, when they're, you know, going in that corner. So you're going to be held up by them and then they're going to just stay ahead of you on the straight. So there, there, there could be a trade off there. Sure. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that, that don't make sense to me, you know? Yeah. And I guess another quick note with the, the drag, um, you know, when we're talking about the position of the wing, if you put it, the higher you higher up, you put it that drag force, which is you know, be going to be acting rearward of the vehicle or rearward of the element, mm -hmm. the further up you put it, that also is kind of creating a moment that's picking up your front end. So if, if you can get the wing lower while still being in good, clean air, I mean, and this is something that maybe you can experiment with on the track. You can play with like wool tufts and stuff like that, or, um, or even if you have access to really basic CFD stuff, like uh, I think there's free stuff out there. You could you could start experimenting with finding that position. But if you're able to get it lower, at least if your wing makes a lot of drag, you can reduce that moment that's picking up your front and kind of further reduce or increase the overall aero efficiency. Okay. Sweet. But but that can be tricky. So. Right. Right. And I think it should be noted that it's really easy to get good looking, but wrong answers out of CFD. Yes. So, yeah. So if you find some free software, at least take the time to learn how to use it. Of course. Um, whether it's books, manuals, or a friend, uh, it's definitely worth investing because I could, I could download some software and give <laughs> you some sweet, colorful pictures that look real, but are not. Yeah, you know, garbage in, garbage out, as they say. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly right. So, like, if if you're not sure, the easiest thing is to place it as high as the rule rules allow it, because it will definitely be in clean air there. And if the the drag is usually relatively low on single, even dual air, double air foils, that it probably overall doesn't make that much of a difference. Sure. So, but that I mean, I think that mostly covers the rear rear wings. Yeah. Um, as from a simple, simplistic point of view, I guess. Yeah, no, I think, I think that's a, that's a good, simple, uh, introduction. Um, and 
you know, uh, maybe next tech tip or well, down the road when we do more, right? It doesn't necessarily have to be exactly the next one. Yeah. Um, we can get even more in detail. Uh, you know, I, I guess I don't know if we want to do a bunch of these that are short mm -hmm. and just, you know, you can listen to them uh, as they come out or if we just want to make the next one long. Um, yeah. Because I, I think there's some finesse to, to go into about dive planes and underbody and, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, hood venting, things like that. Yeah. Overall I mean, body shape. Everything you need to get the whole vehicle body to act as an airfoil, as you had referenced earlier. Yes. Yeah. And yeah, there's, there's, uh, maybe at yeah, another time, there's more things we could cover. Like I mean, with the front splitter, we were pretty simple there. But yeah, there's some things yeah. you can do the underbody, you know, adding diffusers and everything to that that can improve efficiency. Like yeah, there's there's a lot more definitely that can be that can be gone into. So we'd like to cover it maybe another time more in depth. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's um, we're I, I guess we're sort of looking for feedback. The we want to do some specific tech tip sessions um but i guess we're kind of lost on whether they should be mm -hmm. long mm -hmm. or short right uh, yes. it might be nice if they're brief um especially when we start getting more detailed if we start talking about more physics principles um mm -hmm. maybe you don't want to listen to that for two hours <laughs> uh so yeah you know just just any sort of feedback otherwise um you know we'll we'll call this one shortish and yeah uh, see how everybody feels yeah like yeah let us know like maybe some of this stuff is is kind of so, can be sometimes hard to explain over just audio so if if maybe it's it seems too complex for what can just be spoken i guess too then let us know but yeah i mean if there's enough demand we can figure out how to add a you know virtual whiteboard or chalkboard and post something somewhere yeah yeah so we're just we're just here. We just like to talk about this stuff. Yep. Uh, yeah, and you know, in the future, it's this isn't just arrow. It's just uh, something we think is uh, popular and and prevalent right now. Mm -hmm. um, and it's certainly fun to talk about. Sort of a black art, um, and lots of people think they get it, but don't. It's kind of interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. But you know, in the future, we'd like to talk about. You know, details and engines, mm -hmm. diffs, mm -hmm. you know, different types of limited slips, maybe tuning those, mm -hmm. dampers, yeah. you know, setting up your whole suspension, tuning that. So uh, let us know what you want to hear because there's plenty to talk about. Yeah. Yeah. No, just, yeah. We, between the two of us, we have some decent experience in a, you know, a lot of different facets of the, the cars, you know. Yeah, this guy sitting across from me does CFD mm -hmm, mm -hmm. for a living, so um, I would I would uh, listen to what he has to say about Arrow. <laughs> I mean, about a lot. He's 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 done a lot, but you know specifically these sections. Uh, yeah, yeah, and good make some good points. And you you have some experience setting up real real people, well, mostly almost real almost race cars. Real. They're GT4 pretty real. is pretty real. Yeah, we we ran a GT3 car, but yeah, no, I mean real yeah, real race, race cars. None of this hoopty Bilstein <laughs> shock, you know, non-adjustable hey, stuff. Hey man, Bilsteins are they're great. They, they're they're something. They're great, just non-adjustable and yeah, and they're they're good for as long as they last. You know, we can yeah. get into that whole spec Miata going to Penske thing. Yeah. Um, Based off the graphs I've seen, it's it's more that the Pesky keeps stamping rather than having that blow off. Um, yeah. Another topic for another time. Of course, of course. But, so. uh, but yeah, I think I think that's about it. What do you think, Brian? Yeah, I think uh, if you any questions you have, uh, uh, you can uh, one one way to 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 send it to us is via our our email. It's motorsportstechtips at gmail dot com. Um, we're also setting up some, some social, social stuff. So oh, some yeah. Facebook, some Instagram. So keep an eye on that. We'll probably add that to the description here as those, as those come online. 
Yeah, um, got to make sure those names are available first. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, like just you know, just let us know, and we just we just like talking about stuff, and it, you know, it lets us break it down in our own heads, maybe learn a little bit ourselves, and then yeah, if we get anything wrong, let us know too. I mean, we're always willing to 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 try to learn something. So. Oh yeah, I'm I'm uh, well not right now, but. In the future, I plan on sitting here just cruising through a case of beer. So <laughs> if, if my information gets a little off base, feel free to let me know and I'll issue a correction. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, well, we're, we're all definitely willing to, to admit when we're wrong for sure. So, yeah, just yep. there's, let us know that too if, if, there's, if, you, if you know more than us. So <laughs> are you willing to, to, to definitely learn a thing or two as well as uh, try to get out some some quick tech tips that's right <laughs> that are motorsports related yeah so the best kind yes yes so so and, until next time thanks for listening this was a, this is a shorter one so but yeah also let us know if you like the longer format shorter format if yeah anything any feedback is is welcome yep thanks again yeah thanks see you next year